Greetings, my Israelite brothers and sisters, heirs, joint heirs, adopted, grafted, natural, spiritual. I apologize for that mirror turning all kinds of ways, but I have my phone on a uh, handle. I uh, hope everything's going well with everyone, and I hope that this video finds you nice and prosperous. It's 91 degrees in South Florida. And I titled this Feast of Trumpets, so I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to dive right into this. Um, I apologize for the two-tone sun and all like that. Uh, last night I came on, didn't know that I was going to, but um, I was on with one of the pastors from Baton Rouge, the Israel God, Brother Pastor James Anderson. Uh, nice brother, they're getting set up. They're gonna get ready to do a program, and uh, they're gonna be using the Zoom format. And I uh, always like helping people get their stuff together when they're trying to do it. So that's what we did uh, last night. Um, let me. Um, last night we read the walls of Jericho, Joshua the sixth chapter. We read it one time through last night. Again, I didn't know that I was coming on, but I did. How you doing, brother uh, Dawi? Uh, well, yeah, I'm careful. I got this, uh, my camera's on the bracket, and I don't have to hold anything. It's all hands-free, and that's the good thing about it. Um, Car cam seems to be what a lot of the subscribers like, so that's why I do them. And uh, and then when you're driving from point A to point B and you got a good 20 minute drive, um, it helps me stay within an allotted time period. But then when it comes to the Sabbath lesson and the messages or Friday night, I'm at a controlled environment where we have the cameras and the congregation so we're able to be a little bit more uh, longer but um, yeah, I am driving safe seatbelt on hands on wheels and uh, I in particular this was a um, gadget that uh, has a suction cup kind of hangs from the window and um, in this state it's legal to use this it's considered hands-free and it's voice my phone is voice controlled so which is also awesome um so let's face the trumpets in jericho walls of jericho let me get into this the walls of jericho the reason why i'm having everybody read it several times is because the walls of jericho are very relevant to the book of Revelations. The book of Revelations and the walls of Jericho talks about trumpets. And trumpets is about an alarm. It informs us that something is getting ready to happen. Uh, it informs us that something is going to take place. There's a, there's a distinct parallel uh, dealing with the walls of Jericho. And that is you had seven priests who had seven trumpets. And before them, um, you had the armed soldiers, and then you had the rearward. Uh, after the seven trumpets, you had the ark of the Lord. And in one scripture, it says, let the priests go before the Lord, because the ark represented the Most High. So... The seven priests with the seven horns uh, was very important as a pattern. Some people think uh, that the Feast of Trumpets is about blowing horns. So everybody goes and get these fancy horns and they'll blow them. They call them shofars and they'll come up on Feast of Trumpets and they they would just start blowing and blowing. And they really 
don't know what the blowing is about. I, at least, I hope that they do know what the blowing of the trumpets is about. But it's not a it's not a feast day to celebrate trumpets or blowing trumpets. It has nothing to do with that at all. And what I'm finding is a lot of these Hebrew groups that are coming into the truth of who they are, but they're doing the feast days and have no idea what the feast day is about. So they literally, and I've come across some who say it was the memorial of the blowing of trumpets. It's, it's about the trumpets. And um, how you doing, Lacia? I think that's what it said. Um, Mackenzie, yes. And Brother Tobiah. So the Feast of Trumpets has very little to do with blowing trumpets. It's a memorial of the blowing of trumpets. So the feast day is not just about getting a bunch of trumpets and blowing them and who can blow the loudest and contest and who can blow shofars and all like that. And I say that not to be critical. I say that because when I used to observe the Feast of Trumpets, I didn't know what the, I didn't know what I know now. And so uh, we knew that it was a Sabbath. We came together on the Sabbath and, you know, we would have shofars and we want to say, who can blow the shofar? You know, who can blow it the loudest? Who can blow it the proper? It has nothing to do with the blowing of trumpets. The trumpets, the Feast of Trumpets isn't about an alarm that's going to take place. And it's about a future event. And some people have to look at the word, the memorial of the blowing of trumpets. It's like, this is not something that had already happened in the past. The celebration of the memorial of the trumpets is about something that is going to take place in the future. So it can be a little deceiving when you say, it's the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets. Well, when was the trumpets blown? Okay, so people will start to pull up different messages, uh, different uh, scriptures to show that this is what the trumpet's about. They use the trumpet to sound the trumpet. David sound the trumpet or they sound the trumpet when they were getting ready to do this and do that. And of course, the number one that people use is when the children of Israel marched around the walls of Jericho, they would sound the trumpet. They did that once a day. And then on the last day, they marched around the walls seven times. And on the seventh time, they would sound the trumpet. And Joshua told the people to shout. And a lot of people would use that story as the celebration of the memorial of trumpets. And they go into history and say that, well, trumpets has always been used for this, trumpets been used for that. All of that is good and dandy, but once you evolve your knowledge, trumpets is about, and the whole layout of Joshua, the sixth chapter, is a foreshadow of what's going to happen in the future. So let me show you. Uh, those of you that have read it with me last night, and I hope that you read it uh, again several times, seven times. And that's just my number. There's nothing with that. I just, it's, it's just a number of completion that I use and I read things seven times. So, and it's the whole chapter, by the way. Uh, so what you're going to find is, is that those seven priests with the seven trumpets are a similitude of the book of Revelation when you had seven angels. The priests represent the angels. The trumpets that the angels had uh, is a similitude of what the priests had. Each day when they sounded the trumpet, something uh, takes place in the similitude of, of the book of Revelations. And it tells you when the first angel was given orders to sound the trumpet, 
and then on the second trumpet, the third trumpet, and they even, every time the trumpet sound, there were seven more angels that uh, had uh, vows of plagues. And when the first trumpet sound, the angel who had the vow would let that plague out. And then the second day, he would do the same thing. When the angel blew the second day, or whenever it was, whenever they were given the order to sound their trumpet, the another angel, because there's only seven angels, seven with, with trumpets, and there's a, a different seven angels with the piles of plagues. But when it came to the seventh trumpet, that is when the Most High returns. You can re read that in the book of Revelations. But when he returns, here's the similitude. Joshua was told, he told the people, shout, for the Lord have given you the city. In Joshua, the sixth chapter. In the book of Revelations, once the seventh angel sounds and the seventh angel releases the vow of the plague, that is a similitude of war that was that happened in the walls of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down and the children of Israel overtook the city because they said the Lord have given you the city. So they were told they were given the city even before the regiment started. The city is yours. And that's why in the very first verse it says none came in and none went out because of the children of Israel. And then it let you know what they were did. They just, they encamped around those walls. So um, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It belongs to them. It doesn't matter what kingdoms are set up, what world powers are set up. The earth is the Lord's. He is going to take it back. It belongs to him. He's going to rule here on earth. We're not going to heaven. He's going to come right down here on earth and he's going to reign on earth and sit on the seat of David. And Zechariah says there's going to be one Lord, one God. He is going to reign here on this earth. And that's, that's what it is. And it's going to happen. And so being that it's going to happen, the book tells us, the scriptures tells us what's going to happen, how it's going to happen even when it's going to happen. It tells us when. And when it happens, the slain of the Lord is going to be many. And that just goes to show the children of Israel were told, the city is yours. Here are the instructions in which you're going to get it. And believe it or not, they got it. Exactly the way the scriptures outlined that they were going to get it. So the same thing. So that's why the walls of Jericho and the sequential order of things, even in how they were lined up, is a similitude of what happens in the book of Revelations. And the fact that they overtook the city and the walls came down, when the Most High sounds that last trumpet and the angels given the order, he returns and the walls of kingdoms are going to come tumbling down. And the saints that return with the Most High are going to take the city. That's it. Him, his angels. Now, I haven't looked in to say who's going to be with the rearward, but I believe his angels are going to be the ones that are going to be a similar to of the armed men that you read in Joshua, the sixth chapter. And it says, and the armed men went before the priest that blew the trumpet and the, and which was went, and the armed priest went before the ark of the Lord. So uh, I would say that his angels, his holy angels that are going to return with him. And I believe that the saints are more than likely are going to be the rearward. They're going to come after the Lord. So he comes 
and those of us that are in the first resurrection are going to be there with him. Now, some people say, well, aren't the saints going to be a part of the battle? I don't know. I really don't know. I have to go back and look at some scriptures to make that determination. And I, I've, I've been around people who've tried to um, make this a subject of discussion. And I didn't really waste a lot of time. Some things I don't waste a lot of time on. And let me tell you why. Because I don't care if I am a part of the armed or the railroad protection. I just want to be in the first resurrection. So some things is not worth the time to me, for me, maybe for somebody else to get into those type of discussions and and because they're going to lead into, no, you're wrong. And it, it, it does, does it really matter? If I'm in the first resurrection, I don't care if I'm one of the armed individuals that is with the angels, because we're all going to be spirit anyway. We're all the spirit, and we all have a job. We all have a function, and I don't care what that function is as long as I'm a part of that glorified body in the, in the first resurrection. So it really doesn't matter to me uh, how that's going to roll out. So I think that's why... Um, but we can, you know, maybe when we read uh, Revelations and Joshua as we do our lesson, maybe it might be in there. How you doing, Lady J? Sister Linda Jones Vickers, how are you? Uh, Ruth Roman Catholic Truth, how are you? Says Protestants didn't exist before 500, 1500 AD and thus a false cluster of sects of the devil, okay? Uh, Kelly Page, hi Pastor Johnson, I'm listening from Maryland. How you doing Kelly? Uh, we've talked on the phone before, I believe I know. Um, Letha, Letha McKenzie, I can see your name better. Uh, how are you doing? And of course, Brother Tobio and Dawid. Uh, he says, I love the lessons on the wilderness as it helped me tremendously. I'm glad it did. Uh, all praises to the Mokzai, because it's his scriptures. You're driving, yes, okay, so we, we were there. Okay, now, um, another quick discussion, because I'm almost at my destination, another quick discussion I can stick in here when we talk about the trumpets and the walls of Jericho. Um, This happens after the tribulation. I wanted to, to plug that in. Everything that we're studying when the Most High returns, it will be after the tribulation. The tribulation must take place before the Most High returns. Now, these are, these are things that people want to know. People get into debates on this all the time. No, the Lord's going to come before the tribulation. Or we're going to be caught up. We're going to be in heaven during the tribulation. All of these things people debate, and nobody ever gives a scripture. Nobody ever opens up the scripture. It's always an opinion, and well, it's my understanding, and this is what my pastor taught me, but nobody ever gives a scripture. So I'm going to give you a scripture. Why is it immediately after tribulation? Matthew 24, and I believe verse 29 says, and immediately after after the tribulation. So look around about in that verse. I know it's the 24th chapter and I know it's around verse 29, if not verse 29. It says, and immediately after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall be this, and, and the scrolls are going to roll back. Whenever you read in the scripture, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from the heavens like a leaves of the fig tree that is always the same script whether it's in uh, the book of joel whether it's in ezekiel zachariah revelations matthew uh, or the gospels it's always the same script before the appearing of the lord when it returns that's always the script the sun shall be darkened the moon shall not give her light. The heavens shall roll back as a scroll, and the stars shall fall as a, as as a the leaves from a fig tree. Whenever you read that, 
you can always, always associate that as the time, as the sign that the Most High is returning. So that happens right before he returns. So you know he's coming. I mean, when, when that happens, he's coming. He's, he is on his way. There's no stopping him now. He's on his way. Stop him anyway. But you know what's getting ready to take place. So you can read that in where Jesus said that in Matthew, the 24th chapter. That's what the chronological of order things are going to be. It's good to know and you feel good when you know it. And um, so this is why I give the scriptures so that it's important that you understand it as well. You must understand it. So Revelations 11 chapter, when you see that temple being built in the section allotted to the Gentiles to tread upon for three and a half years, you already know what's getting ready to happen, okay? So you just got to be prepared to let that grow down like that. Um, that's, that's when that temple is being built, you need to keep your eyes open because after that temple's built, that's when the Romish Christianity government is going to operate out of that holy city. Once that happens, that marks three and a half years. You better either be running, prepared, whatever. That's why it says, don't even go and get your clothes. If you're on the, if you're on the rooftop, don't even don't even think about going back down into the house to get the clothes. Don't do that. Okay? Just go. You just need to get where we need to get to go. Now, somebody says, "Well, how do we know and who's going to get us there? If you are living righteous, you don't have that to worry about. Trust me, you just going to get there. He's going to make sure you get there." Because your name is written in the book of life. You will get there. Don't worry. Don't be concerned. Somebody says, well, suppose I don't have a passport. When it's time to get there and your name is on that book, you're not going to have a problem. Just get there. You're going to be fine. Okay? You know, uh, I got a passport. But like, what happens is, like the scripture says, if you're on the rooftop and you see this happen, uh, don't go back down into the house. I'm not going back and down the house because the angel of the Lord told the. Remember, the angel went down. Look at these stories in the Bible. I don't mean to be so quick, but look at the stories in the Bible. The angel went down to Lot's house, knocked on the door and said, let's go. Let's go now. We got to go. They went down to get it. And they said, listen, get everything you got. Leave, leave everything, just get you. Get you and your family. Everybody that's going to go, let's go now. Let's move now. And But remember, the there were men at the door who wanted the male angels. They wanted them. And they had to smoke them with smoke and, and, and blind them temporarily. And then they said, listen, we don't have all day. Let's go now. And do not look back. Just, just look forward. Don't look back. Because something's getting ready to happen. Do not look back. As you know the story, Lot's wife looked back. But it was the angels that got them up out of there. So some people try to figure out, well, they're going to put us on planes. And are they going to make a law for us if anybody wants to go? No, they're not doing none of that. Ain't, ain't none of that going to happen. None of that's going to happen. You just need to know that when the angel of the Lord, and you will know that it's the angel of the Lord. Somebody's going to say, well, how do you know it's the angel of the Lord? Trust me, you will know that it's the angel of the Lord. Lot saw, uh, there's countless stories where they saw the angel of the Lord, and it was just uh, a, 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 an angel that appeared as a person, but the manner in which they appeared or they looked, they knew that it was an angel of the Lord. That's all. That's all. It's just how it's going to happen. That's what how Abraham came. He saw the three men. And he right away, he's bowing down. Okay? So you would know. And that's how the Almighty is going to operate. Let's go. Go. Let's go. We, where are we going? Don't worry about it. 
Just walk. Follow me. That's the only thing I can tell you. I enjoyed this lesson, man. I love this. The, the, the Almighty has just opened up my insight on this. And I could not. I knew this, but I didn't know how to teach it. And now I know how to teach it because I knew these questions would come up. And and some of the one of the reasons why I didn't teach it was because some people are gonna say, well, how do we know? Or, or what's gonna be the mode of transportation? And and what's gonna be this? You know what the mode of transportation is? I'm gonna bear you on eagle's wings. That's what he's gonna do. I'm gonna bear you on eagle's wing. Eagle's wing is not a jet plane. As they said in Revelations, the 12th chapter, I took you back over to uh, uh, the book of Exodus. And he says, I brought you out of the land of Egypt and bore you on eagle's wings and took you into the wilderness. So that's how, that means he's got the power to do it. We cannot second guess, second look, second think the most high. When it's time. It's time. That's it. You just got to trust him. It's time to go. When he told the church in Israel, he said, listen, get your lamb on the 10th day. Keep it until the 14th day. Kill it in the evening. Take the blood and put it on the doorpost. And if you don't do it, wherever I don't see the blood, I'm not going to pass over you. But I'm coming through this night. And I'm going to kill everything that's uh, firstborn. Male, beast, it don't matter. Cat, little feet, feet, the dog. It don't matter. If they first born and there's no blood, they gone. They dead. End the story. And that happened. And Pharaoh said, y'all be out of here, gone. Then when they got the back to the Red Sea, where we going to go at, Moses? We got the Red Sea behind us and we got Pharaoh's army coming. But the angel of the Lord spoke to Moses and said, stick up the staff of your hand. And then it says, behold, see the salvation of the Lord. And that's what's going to happen in the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter says, the, the serpent, the dragon came at the woman with a flood, but the earth protected the woman. The earth protected the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt and, and Pharaoh came after him like a flood. Angel said, stick up, your, stick up that staff. Behold, see the salvation of the Lord. A highway was provided. A highway was provided. This is awesome, man. This is why you got to keep the commandments, the dietary law, statutes, judgments, because you want your name written in the book of life. Can't wait to the last moment. Can't wait to the last moment. You got to get this thing together now. All right, you all, peace. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll talk soon.